Okay, my name is Maria Garcia, and my presentation is going to be about poverty and homelessness. Okay, so my question was, how is the nature of homelessness connected to people living in conditions of poverty? Who can be homeless, a homeless person? A runaway can be a homeless person because they run away and they don't have a home. Someone that lost their job, someone that has a mental or physical illness. It can be anyone. This shows a poverty rate in Oklahoma. Overall, 16.6, .6, rank 37. This is gender and age. And then the bottom is race and this. And ethnicity. As you can see, African American is the highest. In Oklahoma City, to, in 2015, people who are homeless reported 18% are a member of a homeless family with children, 38% report mental illness, 46% report substance abuse, 10 claim to be veterans, 16 reported being a victim of domestic violence, 12% are 17 years old or younger. In this chart, it shows people in poverty, in the percent, and you can see Oklahoma, and we're actually ranked 34th over the 50 states. Hawaii has the largest homeless population, and Mississippi has the lowest. What you can do to help is donating, volunteering at a shelter, informing people that um, their types aren't, aren't true. Like they're just homeless because they have an addiction or something. It can be like they're, they lost their jobs. You can help out in the food bank. And this is some places I've been to and donated. City Rescue Mission, Hope Center, where I interviewed Chris and Sarah. Any questions? What made it, what motivated you to have this as your research topic? Just, I, I guess it's just like an emotional topic because I have family in Mexico going through this right now and it's just really, I can really relate to this. Like, yeah, so I chose to do this. So do you think that that made it easier for you to do research or try to look for ways to help? Yes, way easier. What kind of process did you go through? To find places you could help out or to get information? Calling people, seeing if they were available, if we could go or see if we could interview them. How do you think... Um, and I'm not sure if I'm asking the right kind of questions, but I'm going to. How do you think the issue of homelessness and poverty, how do you think it affects kids at school? Because um, they're, they, it gets affected because they um, start like, they like emotionally drains them and then they feel like they can't do nothing and since their other like family members are going through it, so they think they're gonna have to go through it. But they can push through if they wanted to and turn it into a new cycle instead of repeating the old cycle. Do you feel like we have a lot of kids at Centennial that are homeless? Probably, yeah. Because of their education, like they're not, they don't think they can like do something better because of where they're at, but they can't if they try. Do you have any ideas to try to motivate kids, like for educators? Just to inform them that and like have people that come from those situations say like have life proof of that like they can get better. So guest speakers? Yes. So guest speakers that overcame a lot of obstacles? Yes. That's a good idea. Anything else? How are homeless and poverty, how are they connected? Because if you're in the poverty, if you're in poverty, and then you like you lose the job, and then that becomes that turns into being left without a home, money, 
there's no money, so can't pay for anything. And then you can go <coughs> to shelters. How many shelters do we have? Oklahoma, I'm not sure. I've been to two only. Do the shelters offer a way for people to get back on their feet? Oh, yes. They offer a lot of organizations that, um, and classes to like help them with their mental, physical issues. And teenagers are in high school. There's in the city rescue mission, you have the high schoolers that are there have to have a 2.5 GPA in order to be there. So to stay in the shelter, they have to keep their grades up? Yes. Hmm. So if you're a homeless kid and you ran away from home, you can get shelter. You get shelter. As long as you stay in school. Yes. It's good. Are there any requirements for adults at homeless shelters? So the women and families stay by themselves and the men stay by their self? Yes. What if it's a man, a, a, a dad, and a kid? I don't think they can. I mean, like, families sit with the Would women. they be in the family section? Yeah. Okay. Women. They're just men. They're separate. And what would you suggest for capstone students who are going through this kind of process or for seniors? or for someone entering high school, what kinds of things and skills and knowledge do they need to know to be able to do a project? The capstone project? Mm-hmm. Or a presentation? They need to know their research. <laughs> they need to, and like, get, like, into it, actually, like, connect with it. It's easier, a lot easier. And just know what to, know what it is. So it that, is going to be hard, though. <clears throat> so that's content. What about academics? What do they need academics? to know? <clears throat> academics be on top of the class and writing skills and also You have to be able to read graphs and data? Oh, yes. Because there's a lot of research involved. And so what was your favorite thing about doing this? Going to the places and, like, getting to know who works there and why they do it and if they enjoy it. What was your impression of, did, oh, first of all, did you talk to some of the homeless people at mm -hmm. the shelters? I did not. You did not, okay. Well, what was your impression of the people working at the homeless shelters? They love their job. They like, they're like a people's person, so they love like trying to get them motivated to do better. And that like inspired me so. I want to volunteer one day when I get the chance. Are there any requirements for volunteers? I didn't look into that, but I'm sure there is. I think just, just sign an application and you can go make an appointment. Why did you pick this topic? Because I feel connected to it because I have some family in Mexico going through this. And I just I wanted to do it over to inform people about it. Ladies over here, do you have any questions? Okay, well, thank you.